Boom, we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Life as a Chad YouTube channel. And I thank all of you for being here, wherever you, you may be, and of course, however you may be listening. I wanted to respond to this, and, and I know I'm I'm really far behind on this, and you've probably seen like a hundred reaction videos to it, but Obviously, I'm going to provide my own slight nuanced take on it on the only fan or the only only stands former creator Nala. <clears throat> I've seen reactions from the Manosphere, from some of the more tradcon channels or conservative channels uh, across the board. So this this girl, if you're not aware, has been on OnlyStans since she was, I, I mean, literally like right out of high school. And I first saw her when she went on the Whatever podcast and she went viral for saying that uh, one of her kinks is that she likes to cheat and uh, and she was, she further was questioned on it on other podcasts. And essentially her answer was, cause a lot of people were like, well, why don't you just break up with the person? Isn't that mean? Isn't that cruel? And her answer was, well, then it wouldn't be cheating. If I left the person and then had sex with the other individual, then it wouldn't be cheating. Thus, I would not be fulfilling my, uh, my, uh, quirk or, or whatever fetish or kink i'm not familiar with all these words because i seldom use them uh <laughs> but so there's that and she revealed on the whatever podcast that she knew both her mom and her dad uh her dad was has been very supportive of her career whereas her mom has not and uh, she doesn't really get along with her mom very well. And she was raised in a Christian household. I think her dad was a pastor, a Protestant pastor, which as soon as I saw that, I was not surprised. You guys got to understand, I, as an Orthodox Christian and a former Protestant, I, it's kind of like somebody who, oh, this is a perfect metaphor. It's kind of like somebody who, uh, is, and just bear with me here, was a former prawn star and is no longer a prawn star. They can see the evils within it much quicker than the average person can. Now, I'm not saying Protestantism is evil per se, but but the the issues, the drawbacks within Protestantism, I can see like that because I came from Protestantism and had to get over those uh, issues and barriers myself to become Orthodox and co convert to uh, Eastern Orthodoxy. And one thing that I have said in previous videos regarding Protestantism, and, and it was a major reason why I converted, is Protestantism has very much, because there is no checks and balances in Protestantism, every pastor is essentially their own pope every person within protestantism is their own pope and they can fit scripture and morph it to their own will every which way and so what you end up getting is you end up getting a lot of female pastors you end up getting lgbt lgbqt infiltration within the church you get a lot of things where it can be morphed and you ask one Protestant and they go, look, CCC scripture, scripture says, that, because that is their only tool for anything really biblically or, or within their faith. That's their only, their go-to is scripture. And, and to the layman, it is, it, I guarantee they're like, well, that makes sense. I mean, within Christianity, wouldn't you want to use the Bible? Well, of course. Of course you do, but the but every individual is flawed. We we are sinful. We have pride. We we do not have a perfect understanding of scripture. 
And one thing that Eastern Orthodoxy has that Protestants don't is we have councils that that spend years and years and 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 not just the years and years within our lifetime, but years and years in previous generations of interpretation. So it has gone through the the carousel and and the, our theology is so refined at this point. And our biblical understanding is so refined at this point and so uh, strong and steadfast because it has gone through that process of of constant trial and error and and uh, argumentation on on what this scripture means in this scripture. And within Protestantism, it can change like that. And one person, their opinion on it is as valid as another. This is otherwise known as sola scriptura or sola scriptura. <clears throat> so I don't want to go too much further into that. Suffice it to say, I was not surprised when she said, Nala, let's bring this back to Nala. When she said that her dad, a Christian pastor, was okay with her doing only stands because you see that a lot within Protestant churches. I, and I saw this myself and this was something I was always like, what the heck? My entire life was how what seems to be so straightforward within the Bible, how some people would be able to twist it and morph it and bend it to their own will and the thing is, is that if you're a Christian, you do believe in evil. So it is certainly possible for the wrong individual to get a hold of the Bible and interpret it for their own evil, selfish intentions. So I wasn't surprised to see that her dad did that. So she went on the whatever podcast multiple times and uh, that is essentially that. And fast forward, and now she is a uh, born-again Christian. And so we're going to be <clears throat> responding to that a little bit. And a lot of people have been asking me, well, what's your take? What's your take? Do you, do you think it's, do you think that uh, she's sincere and, and uh, it, 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 should we believe this? Should we be forgiving this and that? So let's just read this a little bit. So, geez, all these pop-ups, dude. Damn. Nala Ray, an Illinois-born pastor's child. I, also, I'm not surprised she's from the Midwest. She definitely seems like a Midwest bitch. White, white chick. Uh, Obviously, I know people from the Midwest, and so I've been through there quite a bit. And I've always said that the that the Midwest and the South, their women just seem to have like this kind of like years and years of of uh, genealogy of of uh, that the current end product that you see is the best of of all these years and years and years of breeding. But anyways, I'm not going to delve into that too far. Uh, an Illinois-born pastor's child turned OF model, left the adult industry after a come-to-Jesus moment led her to reconnect with her forgotten faith. The content creator was working as an orthopedic surgery schedule before a man recruited her for the online site in 2020. But despite her popularity as a top 1% earner on OF, a subscription-based adult website, Nala had a change of heart. The ones who are glamorizing this lifestyle are men trying to run women's lives and take a percentage of it. And it's horrifying. It's truly horrifying to be a woman and have men take a percentage of you showing your body on the internet. It's just like having a pimp. <laughs> it's just like having a pimp. It's truly horrific. That it's being advertised in that manner, but it makes me want to fight all the more to help women understand that this is not where you want to go, the influencer says. So let's respond to that. I know for a fact, I and better content creators would have more time to pull up this video in the comments if you guys want to link this video. I know I have seen her comment 
when asked because on these panels, on these uh, uh, intersexual dynamic dating panels, they commonly ask the question, what are your thoughts on feminism? Is it good or bad for society? Are you a feminist? At another question that they commonly ask is, is uh, uh, only stands, is it uh, empowering for women? Is uh, sex work empowering for women? And I know for a fact that she said it is, that it is very empowering for her as a woman to be able to show herself and 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 show off her sexuality and and yeah. I am woman, hear me roar. Roar. <laughs> Maybe she didn't say that last part, but and that's the thing, guys. Like <clears throat> any man who is being honest, and any man who has had like a little bit of experience with women in that regard knows that women view sex far differently than men do. Uh, women, and and I'm going to make a video on this down the line, and I've talked about it several times in, in associated around, around about ways, but women have, as much as they like on these panels, they will profess to be able to have sex like men. And like one question that Myron Gaines has asked in the past is, uh, do you think that you alone could satisfy a man's sexual desires or, or needs, not desires, needs? And without fail, women say, most of the women say yes. And in reality, they have no way of knowing because they're not men. They don't have testosterone. So I don't necessarily blame them for saying that, of course, you know, because they're in, in delusional land and they just think anything you can do, I can do better. But men have testosterone, obviously. No, a single woman cannot do that. But when you are in a monogamous relationship, there is a certain give and take. Now, within a Christian marriage, of course, it is the woman's duty, the wife's duty to do her best to meet the sexual needs of her husband. But a husband also, uh, and a good leader, knows when to be understanding and empathetic, and, uh, especially to the plight or whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's just not her day or something like that. That's That's the slight give and take of the relationship. Now, by the way, I'm not saying it's a, it's an excuse because definitely some women go way too far with it and end up skipping months on giving sex to their husband. I'm not saying that. I'm saying like once in a in a blue moon, it is understandable where it's like okay, maybe not maybe not today, but overall that is the expectation. A woman cannot on her own meet the needs solely of her husband. Okay, not especially when he's in his younger years of manhood. <clears throat> Furthermore, when it comes to the relational dynamics of what men and, and women are both looking for, they are far different. Again, any man who's being honest and has been with women know that that the within the process, the things that they are looking for and seeking out are far different than what the man is. The man is seeking a quick physical um, uh, interaction and ending to that drive. Whereas women are seeking a prolonged emotional bond, bonded connection over the course of quite a substantial amount of time. Women also within that bonding, they 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 start to feel uh, trust in sharing certain things within themselves, within their emotionality. Women, it this is all attached to them being far more emotional than men are. So what men and women are looking for are are nowhere near the same. So when women say that they can have sex like a man and they pretend like they can have sex like a man and they pretend like they can sleep around like a man can and you know cuz you'll see on these on these uh on these podcasts where they'll act like oh yeah I I have like 
I have like four guys that I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm with you, heard me. And like, you know, and, and then Myron will ask, I didn't, sorry guys. I didn't do a female very good there, but I was trying to simulate a female. Um, Myron will ask them, okay, are you sleeping with all of them? And the answer almost always is no. Whereas if, if you flip the roles, if a man was with four women, you can almost guarantee that if he felt strong enough to say that, it would only be because he's actually sleeping with all four women. Women seek different outlets to express their love. They seek attention, resources, time, energy. And so within the same example, when there's four guys that they consider that they're with, there's one guy that's usually for the resources that's fitting those needs, that's taking them out to dinner and things like that. There's the Chad that's filling the sexual needs. There's the guy who's funny. They fit multiple different things. But what it's not is that woman is sleeping with all four of them like a guy would with all four women. It's not happening. So when I anytime, and this is why when men watch these these episodes, they get so fucking annoyed with this stuff because it is annoying. It it's it's such a front and a lie that these women pretend like they can have sex like men can. They can't. It's ridiculous. Not only within kind of an intersexual dynamics can they not, but biologically they can't. Because why? Well, women, once they get pregnant, well, actually, let's backtrack. How many babies can a woman have in a year? One. How many babies can a man have in a year? Several. If he has several different women, he can impregnate all seven of those women. It's a, it's an endless amount. So it's just different. It's not the same. They look for different things. Okay. Women are far more selective and picky because they are looking for a protector and a provider for not only themselves because they're the weaker sex, but for their children, their offspring. So it's just bullshit. But to go back to the original point on what she said and how she's immediately trying to put this back on men and how men are disgusting assholes for for watching and watching this type of content. And the thing is, like, I do on a certain level agree. At the end of the day, you were an adult when you got into this. You knew exactly what you were getting into. But your desire for attention and adoration and money and resources far outweighed. So your emotional connection to those things far outweighed your logic to say, nope, it's not worth it. It's not for me. The downsides are far too great for me to take all those things. And so people are asking me what I think of this Nala situation. Well, it's like, no, I mean, just looking at this right now, this is fucking bullshit to immediately try and blame her deciding to get into OnlyFans on, or only stands, excuse me, on men as if they are the reason she got into it is ridiculous. Women deserve accountability, are, are, are supposed, especially in today's day and age, they need to be taking as much accountability as men do because I got news for you. They're taking on, uh, they're trying to take on as much responsibility. If you're trying to be a boss babe, well, then you got to take the accountability like a man would uh, for trying to be a boss man. Okay. Well, they don't call it a boss man. They just call him a boss. You heard? And that's just the way it is. All right, let's keep reading. <clears throat> I can't even tell you how much my life has changed since then. Everything in my life has just kind of come to this room where I can now observe it and then be like, okay, so I don't really want to do this anymore. I know that this isn't what God wanted me to do with my life. She said, must be nice. Must be nice after you have taken taken millions of dollars out of the pockets of of poor simp beta effeminate men. It must be nice for you to be able to say after all of that, after all of that hindsight, hindsight. It must be nice for you to say, nope, this is not what God wants for me. Because it's funny before when you were on the whatever podcast, you were sure talking about how empowering it was, how 
uh, how this is not an affront against God that you did this. And by the way, I don't hear you denouncing your actions anywhere. I don't see you. And the, and again, like I said, I'm an Orthodox Christian. And because a lot, I already know there's a lot of Christians that have responded to this situation and have, uh, and especially uh, conservatives who have feverishly tried to be in support of her and and be like, oh, see, our our lifestyle is better. You see, she finally came to us. Let's let's forgive her and accept her. Oh, let's bring her in. God is all about forgiveness, and Jesus is all about forgiveness. Well, yeah, but that's God. We are still called to hold people accountable here on earth. They're, God, the society that God allowed to be created is a society with accountability for one's actions. Okay, us holding her accountability accountability for her actions here on earth, which newsflash happens all the fucking time, does not mean that God still can't have his, his own judgment uh, with her when the time comes. We're not speaking on that. We're speaking on the real world uh, consequences of her actions and us asking her to be accountable to those actions here on earth. I don't see her uh, professing her sin anywhere here. I've heard her, I've seen her blame men and her just all of a sudden after she's made millions of dollars and slept with multiple men selling her body on the internet, showing her nude body to an endless amount of men and probably women, her saying, nope, I don't want to do this anymore. Must be nice. Must be nice to be able to say that. And so honestly, guys, this is really what this comes down to. This is all, this is all a, to me, this is another attention grab i mean yeah obviously she has a great physique there there's a reason she was super successful on only fans uh she has a very athletic uh uh physique but we're not talking about that now guys we're talking about this bullshit <laughs> we're talking about this bullshit her christian conversion all right let's continue honestly it was crazy He's actually a devout Christian. He started praying. Oh, oh shit. This is her boyfriend or some shit. Um, the content creator said that her current partner helped propel her towards change. God, people saying partner is so cringe, bro. I <laughs> the, the, the current society that we live in sucks. It just sucks. Honestly, it was crazy. He's actually a devout Christian. I'm sure. <laughs> He started praying over me and sending me Bible verses and just being so loving in a way that wasn't romantic. <laughs> she continued, how effeminate is this? OF has blown up both in its number of creators and consumers since 2020. A reality Nala says is exacerbated by social media. It's playing a really bad role for younger people because it's just truly putting it up on a pedestal to make you think that you can have this amazing life. No, I'll tell you what OF is doing. OF is putting women like you on a pedestal by these simps or the or these betas. Beta! And allowing you to earn an enormous amount of money that you otherwise in any other society would not be able to make because you have zero talent or skill of actual consequence that would earn that, that type of money. While the majority of social media content surrounding uh, OF advertisers, the potential earnings of its top 1% of creators, which generates 33% of the site's total revenue. So in other words, only the top, the, so pretty much the only people making money are the top 1% earners, which generate 33% of the site's total revenue. The median income for a model on the site averages to only $180 a month. Well, her journey forged through a reconnection with Christ changed the young adult's trajectory. The OF 
Models website still remains with a single post, a matter she says is due to a delay in tax documentation. So in other words, she still has her OF uh, website on. And you know why that is? So she can still earn tips and money from the betas who keep sending her money. She's she's keeping it open to have a, a continuous stream of income while this whole charade has given her far more attention than she otherwise would have had she not had this conversion. What the heck? Why is my thing not working here? What it feels like deleting OF. How, how, <laughs> I will never understand, uh, like Instagram stuff like this or TikTok. You can't even really, t is she crying? I can't tell. <laughs> I posted a Christian video because I'm waiting on the tax documents. And if I don't have anything in there, they can completely delete the account while I'm waiting on the paperwork. But we're deleting it. Everything's been wiped off of it. The online uh, starlet has documented her journey back towards religion on TikTok. While some welcome her new direction with open arms, other remain reluctant to accept the authenticity of her new path. Me! Uh, the content creator's baptism video posted last month uh, garnered over 4 million views. Uh, while some users wrote that the TikToker is beyond saving, others stated that they're happy to see people choose Jesus. And, and I am too. I am happy. Uh, I, I want that. That's my biggest goal by having my YouTube channel is to create as many Christians as possible. That That is like the number one thing that I am focused on is showing that, that God is dope, that Christianity is awesome. It's the path. It's the way. Uh, it's the way for the OGs out there, the real Gs out there, you heard? And that's, that's what I'm about. So I, I agree with that. But... This, this one said, another user statement with over 18K likes to anyone that says beyond saving, go open up your Bible and read the Gospels. He can do anything. Okay, fair enough. True. But that doesn't take away the fact that there are real that there is real world accountability and consequences for one's actions here on earth. So let me ask you guys this. If somebody were to uh, grape somebody and then... Five months later, said that they had converted to Christianity and that they were a born again Christian. Would that take away the responsibility of the graping that was done? Of course not. No, no. God can forgive, but the accountability that you have here on earth still remains. Okay. That's, that's just a fact. Huh. Nala has been taking her metamorphosis step by step. Most recent, her metamorphosis step by step. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. We live in such a uh, fucking effeminate society. This is what you get when you have a, a society run by women. Uh, getting rid of 13 bags worth of immodest clothing and taking down content she sees fit in accordance to her newfound relationship with God. I've taken everything down that I have felt the Lord truly tell me, like, take this down. I've taken everything down with without a question and been like, I'll start over if you want me to, God. I don't even care. Like, it's not worth my eternal soul. Oh, funny. Then how about you give all your money back to the poor saps? that you took millions of dollars for when you were uh, getting banged out on camera. Why don't you give all of them your money back, their money back? Since, you know, since it's so easy to say it's not, it's not worth my eternal soul, which I agree it's not. But the decision was already made. You already did it. It's easy for you once you've climbed the mountain to say, oh, shouldn't have done that. Maybe that's not the best example. But once you've already done something, it's far easier to say, uh, 
to in hindsight. That's why hindsight is called hindsight. I, I this is not rocket science, guys. Uh the middle child of five has also reconnected with some of her chill siblings, but remains estranged from her parents. To those comp contemplating setting up a profile on the website, uh, there's a really good chance that something's going on in your life, and that is making you look at this like an option. Okay, so now it's trauma. Now it's her parents. Now it's now it's her background. Now there's some trauma that led to her doing this. She added, the Bible talks about how sin is pleasurable, like money, getting money is pleasurable. You know, uh, now that you have finances, you can pay for things. It's super enticing. But man, if I could go back to myself, I would hug myself so tight, look her in the eyes and shake her and just be like, Please don't make this, 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 this. I tell her how weird that she is in the world. And how so she is in this world. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. All right, final thoughts. So <clears throat> in this entire thing, she blamed everybody, everything, but saying, I was the one who was sinful. I was the one who did these sinful things. I have a problem with that. The other thing that I have an issue with is in se secular society and this modern society, Every sinful act is chop is is chopped up to uh, or chalked up to uh, trauma or past trauma. And I only did it because my past trauma. Okay, no, no, no. Sometimes you know better and you sin because you're sinful, and that's why you're supposed to repent for your sins and hold yourself accountable for committing those sins. Chalking it up to trauma, why you while why you chose OnlyFans, while it may be somewhat true, only chalking it up to that is is ridiculous. And in general, I don't, as a Christian, I don't believe in uh, living living this life of well. Anytime I sin, if I were to just you know, if if someone were to just uh, uh, murder somebody, for them to just chalk it up to trauma, it's just trauma. Rather than saying, nope, I committed that sin and I will accept all the consequences that come with it, but God, please forgive me. So listen, guys, I, I'm i not very hopeful. Um, well, let me, let me take that back. Everything I'm seeing right now does not garner a ton of confidence. Like Andrew Wilson said in his most re one of his most recent shows, I want to believe it's true. I want I want to believe that her heart is sincere. Ultimately, we are not God. We we will not know if her heart is true and she's being sincere. Only she knows, only God knows. But as for the things that we have seen right here right now, all we're seeing is blaming others, blaming other things, blaming men, blaming society for the sins that she engaged in. Uh, a real person who is truly sorry uh, for and and is trying to repent for their sins would shine light on that and say, I was sinful. I committed sin. If she really is trying to be a traditional woman and engage in a traditional uh, uh, biblical role, would it really be so hard for her to just step away with all the money that she has and live a modest, quiet life lifestyle? No, instead she's basking in all of this uh, attention that has come from this showing that she put forth. There's nothing stopping her from all the attention that she has received, which I guarantee is probably a main reason why she got into something like this in the first place is because she likes a certain amount of attention. If she was really sincere, she would decide to take a step back, get out of the limelight for at least a year 
and get closer to God. God knows she has enough money. God has blessed her with enough money to do so. So I hope she's being sincere. I'm definitely spectacle um, or speculative. Uh, as a Christian, I want as many people to be Christians and share in God's love as possible. Uh, and, and I'm not, me making this video is not wishing that she's not a Christian. It's the opposite. I, I sincerely hope she is. But a part of being a sincere Christian is being real, being honest, being authentic. See, uh, cr people who are authentically Christian and truly in their walk with Christ, are so genuine, so authentic. It, it's it's you, you can see it immediately. I've seen this my entire life being a Christian. There, there are people within my family who, uh, before being a Christian, they lived a certain lifestyle. Now that they're a Christian, they 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 have nothing to hide because they have repented for their sins to God and they are moving forward. They're real. They're authentic. They're not trying to gain anything anymore from those sins. Whereas this, I don't know, man. I don't know. So like I said, I I do hope and pray that she truly does become a Christian. But for those Michael Knowles out there who turned this in, who turned uh, the interview with her into like some daddy daughter uh, uh, therapy session, he ought to be ashamed of himself. That, that was embarrassing. And is this the type of society that we live in to where uh, uh, where women are, are just granted and bestowed this sort of attention just at a whim's notice? You know how, how many amazing things a man would have to do to, uh, to have this sort of adoration to, to be on Michael Knowles' podcast? All she has to do is just say, oh. I'm baptized. I'm a Christian. And she's on forgiven therapy session. Let's talk. He ought to be ashamed of himself for that. That, that pussy ass interview that he conducted with her, that, that was embarrassing. Honestly, it was him having this like daddy daughter, uh, oh, oh, the world was so bad to you and you were forced to do it, forced to do what you did. It's it's just ridiculous because I see with some of these conservatives, like they pick and choose who they hold accountable and, and who they say, you better pull yourself up by your bootstraps. They, they pick and choose who they say that to. Others like Nala, they'll say, oh, oh. You are a Christian now. Let's look past all the, the the hundreds of dicks that you took to the face for money and attention. Let's just look past that. Let's look past the pegging that you did and turned men homosexual by doing that. Let, let's just look past that. Oh, you're a woman. And th thus you're on my show. Now let's, let's have a rap session. So I'm very skeptical guys. And, and listen, if that makes me a dick or pessimistic, so be it. Fuck it. Uh, somebody, somebody has got to be a man around here. May as well be me. So anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I'll probably uh, maybe do some more content on this down the line. We'll see kind of how this uh, unfolds. I, I do wish her the best. And I hope that that she maybe some of this content finds her and she can do a legitimate introspection and self-reflection on uh, what this actual actually means, and if she is being authentic about it, what steps that will uh, uh, entail. So, you know, but until then, I will remain very skeptical, hopeful, but skeptical. All right, guys, be sure to smash that subscribe button at the very least, like, comment, share. You guys know the drone. Last but not least, DBAP. Don't be a pussy willow and fax our feelings because your feelings just don't matter. Love you, Kings. See you guys next time. Crisis King. Peace.